This is the story of a miracle man, the man who was the very best at his profession. He achieved so much and yet suffered so much pain, heartbreak, loss. He was born on a train in Panama about 74 years ago. His mother was a domestic, and in the late 40s in Panama, whites and blacks were separated. His mother went into labor on the train, and only because of the kindness of a Jewish doctor named Rodney Klein was this baby born without complications. Dr. Rodney Klein delivered the baby, and the mother was so grateful she named her son Rodney Klein Carew. Now, we all know Rod Carew was probably the greatest hitter in his generation with Tony Gwynn. He had seven batting titles, 3,000 hits, and he went to the Hall of Fame. They named the AL Batting Title Award after Rod. Now, life seems so effortless for Rod Carew, but life can throw you a curve all the time. After he retired, Rod had a battle with gum and jaw cancer. He chewed tobacco in the field all his life. The cancer was caught early, and unlike his friend and hitting colleague Tony Gwynn, the cancer didn't kill him. But he did lose most of his teeth and part of his jaw to cancer, and yet he survived. It cost him more than $100,000 just to reconstruct his mouth, but he was alive. His daughter, Michelle, had leukemia, a rare form at a very young age, and suddenly Rod's life turned upside down. The only thing that could save Michelle was a bone marrow transplant, but they couldn't find a match, and they tried an experimental treatment, and it failed, and she died at age 18. Rod and his family were devastated. Now, I didn't know Rod well as a player because he could be wary of the media and TV folks like me, but I volunteered to host his fundraiser for Children's Hospital in Orange County many years ago, and I saw a warmer, more accessible, more reflective Rod Carew. We became friends, and he appreciated everything I had done, everything everyone else had done for him, too. Then one day, he suffered a massive heart attack on a golf course and should have died. Paramedics brought him back to life. He got another chance. But his heart was so scarred and damaged, he needed a new heart. He needed a heart transplant and a kidney transplant. One day, Conrad Royland, the Ravens' tight end, suffered a brain aneurysm and died. His family knew Rod's family because their kids attended the same school. Rod Carew was given a new heart and a new kidney by the Ruland family. Three months later, Carew met them. Welcome. Good to see you. According to news accounts, Mary Rowland greeted Carew with a big hug and said, you're part of our family now. Rod Carew is 74 years old. He'll be 75 next year, God willing. He has a new lease on life and every day lives with appreciation and gratitude. His life has been glorious, but also shattering, wonderful, but also soul crushing. But he's alive. Sometimes when you think about all our divisions and all our differences, when you believe our divide will destroy us as a people, think of how fragile and tenuous our lives are. But while you're at it, think also of generosity and kindness and the human capacity to persevere, precisely because our humanity is stronger when we think of one another. For Rod Carew, throughout his life, good people sustained him. Dr. Klein, who delivered him, the doctors who saved him from jaw cancer, the doctors who tried to save Michelle, the paramedics who saved him on that golf course, the football player who donated his heart and kidney so that Rod Carew could live. Don't tell Rod Carew that we can't overcome problems we face. Maya Angelou, the late poet, put it best. We need joy as we need air. We need love as we need water. We need each other as we need the earth we share. Don't ever forget that, ever.